In addition to the socketable GPU tester at MSI's factory in Shenzhen, China, we also found some unique testing and assembly machinery for motherboards. Each motherboard SMT line in this factory is 121 meters long, with the combined 10 lines responsible for producing 1.6 million motherboards per month. Although the SMT line works on the same principles and machines of any other SMT line, there are a few unique steps that stand out for MSI's factory, like the robotic in-circuit testing and semi-automated system building tools. In this video, we'll walk through just some of MSI's overwhelmingly large motherboard and video card factory in China. Before that, this video is brought to you by Be Quiet and its Straight Power 11 series power supplies. The Straight Power 11 PSUs ship from 450 watts up to 1000 watts, accommodating most of the gaming PC build requirements you'd encounter, and focuses on delivering a higher quality power supply that doesn't sacrifice on efficiency or stability. Noise is also a heavy point for the Straight Power 11, using a 135mm Silent Wings 3 fan that can spin as low as 200 RPM for quieter low load operation. Learn more at the link in the description below. One of the most interesting tools in an SMT line is the in-circuit tester, or ICT, where motherboards are checked for defects at the end of the service mount line. At Gigabyte's factory, in-circuit testing was largely a manual process, with technicians checking the boards at a special station at the very end of the SMT lines. MSI also used to do it this way and still does at some stations, but has recently started moving toward more automation. ICT machines check for defects like solder shorts, bad soldering by the machines, missing components, sort of like an alternative approach to optical inspection or AOI, automatic optical inspection, and tombstoning of components, which is when small service mount devices might start lifting off from the solder pads. Two machines sit at the end of each SMT line, each with two motherboard carriers. The machine is equipped with suction cups that grab the board off of the line while the other board is removed by the arm automatically from the ICT machine. The new board is then loaded into the ICT machine with digital displays representing whether the machine is holding weight or not. If the boards pass, they are fed down the line to manual quality checking technicians. As for what the motherboard is placed on, there's a custom CNC plate for every single motherboard model that has to be seated on the top of the ICT machine. The plate helps mask which pins are and aren't exposed to the board, with those making contact used for testing the board, like for simple continuity, for a common example. 95% of all pins on the motherboard are tested with this device, often upwards of 1,800 pins total per board, and 100% of all motherboards go through these machines. MSI also has a custom-built motherboard tester that uses semi-automated processes. It's sort of like automatic PC assembly, although a few pieces of import are missing. The lower deck is for supporting the motherboard, the upper deck is for the CPU cooler, the memory and the video card, and then the rear I.O., including one cable for every single port on the board. This is all pre-wired into a carrier, and when the technician starts the machine, the upper deck automatically lowers and sockets the RAM, the video card, and the CPU cooler all into the motherboard in one button press. The buttons on the machine are labeled top to bottom as start, turn on, carrier support plate, and ascend, which should have a pretty obvious usefulness. Although not fully automatic, these buttons are most of what's needed to get things started. The rear I.O. also pulls forward through automatic connection of all the cables to the motherboard, which prepares the board for software testing to ensure that each of these outputs works. The back of the machine is how you know that this is a functional solution. It's probably one of those things that's built once and then hopefully rarely or never messed with. The blue tubes run to each moving part of the rig with air pressure used to move the plates around. The cables have to be manually connected based upon the board, which adds some manual work but only on the front end, since one type of board is tested for most or all of the day and this saves more time than it ends up costing at the beginning of the day. Once everything's hooked up, the motherboards are run through automatic software testing to ensure everything works. Tests include PCIe bandwidth testing, line in, line out, other audio tests, front in, front out audio, memory, SATA, trusted platform module tests, LAN, and anything else that communicates through the board, which is basically everything. RGB LEDs are used to illustrate various states of passage or failure throughout the testing, and technicians can bin the boards aside if they need to go to QC. Any boards that fail are sent to quality checking for inspection on the same floor, and then after that it's sent from the QC team to a team that manually fixes the defects, often by hand with soldering irons. MSI splits its tests between real-world and synthetic tests, with function testing represented by most of what we just showed. 
Real world testing goes through an operating system, BIOS changes, some performance testing, network testing, and burn ins. This test runs about 20 minutes long, with the automated testing taking only 5 to 10 minutes. As for some of the other manufacturing processes, we'll walk through a few of the more interesting steps from MSI's SMT lines. Motherboards, SSDs, RAM, video cards, and most other devices with PCBs will go through an SMT line at some point. So these are not unique to MSI. They're really not unique at all. We saw one at Kingston in 2012. We've already detailed the start to finish SMT line process in our Gigabyte factory tour, but each factory has a few unique elements that allow them to do things differently. One of the steps we've explained before is the solder paste machine, which is often the first step in any SMT line. Solder paste is applied through a screen, applied to every area of the PCB where a component will be mounted via pick and place machines later, and this is eventually reflowed to secure the components to the board by going through an oven. MSI showed us one of its silk screens for the X470 Gaming Pro Carbon used to guide solder paste placement when these machines are used. One of the other new machines to our channel was the pick and place machine specifically tooled for chokes. Most factories we've toured use manual labor for choke placement, but this factory had one machine that does the work of three operators, multiplied across 10 motherboard lines and five video card lines. That's a lot fewer people required to make the board. And for the company that is helpful because we're told that apparently manpower in Shenzhen is getting difficult to come by. People just don't want to do it anymore. The machines can play six chokes at a time and complete most boards in about 20 seconds total time. Memory slots, power connectors, SATA connectors, and other large components like VRM heat sinks are still placed by hand. Some of these it's because it's difficult for the machines to grasp them. Other ones it's because it's just heavy and would be faster to do by hand than by tooling a machine for it. A weighted block is placed atop things like memory slots to keep them secure as the board goes through another reflow machine because the vibrations from the belt could otherwise knock it loose. Although insignificant in the scope of this video, this small step does show the attention to detail required for every single step of the process of making a complicated product like a motherboard. The Lake of Solder makes another appearance in this line, just like the last one we saw, but we did get some more information on them. As the boards move down the conveyor belts and get dipped in solder, the solder is topped off by bricks of solid solder that get dipped into the lake. The brick lowers on its own over time, it's hung from a hook, and it melts in the 270 degrees Celsius lake below it. It takes about three hours for one solder brick to be completely depleted on a line, with each motherboard using about seven grams of solder on its own. We also looked again at the pick and place machine that plants sockets onto the boards. We previously reported that Gigabyte saves large components like sockets for the end of its production line, but we didn't 100% know why. MSI does the same, and our understanding now is that it's easier to move the board through the line and keep it stable during other pick and place or soldering steps, which might rock the board a bit. The sockets are checked for bent pins before exiting the machines using a, an optical inspector that MSI has worked to customize. It's automatic, it takes functionally a picture of the socket, and then is able to find any bent pins or other defects. Despite being protected, some of these are duds when sourced from the supplier. We're told about 0.2% have bent pins from the supply factory. Another unique step done by MSI is its additional photography step, and this is the one that might get you in trouble if you ever RMA a board. So what MSI does is they have, a, as part of the line, there's a camera that's hooked up that takes really high resolution photos of the front of the board. If you were to RMA the board at some point and there's maybe a set of missing capacitors or something, when MSI gets the board back, they'll compare the board against the original reference photo and see if something went wrong. This is ideally used to figure out if something was wrong at the factory when it went out so it can then be tracked down to the machine and that machine can be fixed. Alternatively, if you do try to pull one over, uh, theoretically they would be able to find out. So it's got two purposes there, but uh, of course who's to say if something happened in shipping before it got to you. So that's MSI's part of it, the motherboard factory. You can check our other video on their socketable GPU tester, and you can check our video on Gigabyte's SMT line if you want the full start to finish details on what every machine in this line does. Thanks for watching. As always, you can support these videos on store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus or just subscribe to catch the next one. We'll see you all next time.